Okay, this is a uh, this is going to be an interesting discussion. So, what I have planned today is I've gathered a group of composer friends I've met recently. Well, not recently, within the last year. I had the idea that we discuss the score to Star Wars or the original Star Wars, which George Lucas eventually changed the name to A New Hope. So, for younger people, they only know it as A New Hope, but it used to be just Star Wars. So, we're just going to take a look at the music to that movie, but the idea is that we're going to take a look through all of the motifs and themes and we're going to try and imagine, let's say for example, you're a late 19th century composer and you have these themes at your disposal and you want to write like a large format symphony. So the idea to the stream is sort of how would we organize the motifs from Star Wars into a symphony? So we'll be going through the forms of each movement and we're going to try and figure out where motifs and melodies and themes work within a four movement symphony. So we're going to divorce the music from the film. So I'll let everybody introduce themselves briefly. Um, we'll start with uh, Robert. Say a few words about yourself and, uh, and then Zach and then Steven, and then we'll get to the juicy bits. All right. Thank you very much for inviting me on. This is a really exciting conversation. Um, uh, my name is Robert and I'm a composer based in the state of Oregon. Uh, hey everyone, my name is Zach Whitney. I'm a trombonist and composer, and um, likewise very excited to get into John Williams' music. I'm Stephen Limbaugh. I'm a musician. I live in Oklahoma, but I spent many years in Los Angeles slogging it out in Hollywood. Okay, so with that, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to present sort of the main light motifs or themes that uh, appear in uh, the first Star Wars movie. So we're just doing the first Star Wars, which means there's no Imperial March or Emperor's theme or Ewok theme. It's just the stuff from the first Star Wars movie. So I'm just going to do a short little run through of each theme. Um, so we have an idea of the themes that are at our disposal. Now for each theme, some of them have a couple of variants from the movie. So variations on, on those same themes, because John Williams is very famous for just being a master of, uh, motivic variation. So the, the first theme is, uh, is, is the force theme. I think most people know it. The next theme is the imperial motif. The next theme is Jawa theme number one. The next theme is Jawa theme two. Next is Jawa theme number three. Then we have Leia's theme. Then we have the main theme, obviously.
and the rebel motif. The stormtrooper motif. The throne room, this is where they get the awards at the end of the movie. The next is the TIE Fighter attack. And then the the two goofiest numbers of the movie, the Cantina Band, one and two. Okay. And that's all of the themes there are um, as far as the main motifs of the movie. So I think it's kind of uh, one thing I'd like to just sort of mention here is the incredible amount of creativity that must have been flowing through John Williams to get this many motifs out in in time for Star Wars. And I think it's uh, probably goes without saying that Star Wars wouldn't have been the success it was without John Williams's music. So if we're going to start this process, we're going to start by analyzing how a, how the first movement of a symphony would be structured. So there are a couple of ways that you can structure sonata form. Um, in orange, I have optional additions to a sonata form movement. So generally symphonies start uh, have their first movement in sonata form. Um, I'd be hard pressed to know of any example in the 19th century that's not in sonata form. Um, maybe there's a symphony that has a uh, you know theme and variations. But for the sake of this uh, stream, we're just going to go with the boilerplate sonata form for the first movement. So there's an option of having an introduction. For the exposition, you need an A theme and a B theme. The C theme is optional. Some sonata forms have three different themes or motifs in the exposition. The development is just variations of those themes without getting into the intricacies of sonata form, which could be a three-hour stream in and of itself. And then you have the recapitulation, which is the A theme and the B theme. Again, usually the B theme returning in the same key as the A theme was. Now, all of that sort of like structural stuff is 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 less important to which themes do we think uh, the first movement should have. I'll open the floor now. I have one like one quick um, uh, note in the uh, examples of the color coded themes. Some of those that you yeah. play in the example are not in the um, key that's written. Like the the rebel, yes. mode, for uh, example, was down a third or something like that. Oh yeah. Just for I'm any, aware of that. With, anybody with perfect pitch listening, we're, we're we're aware of this. It's just you know we're illustrating here. <laughs> it's about it's about the it's about the themes and not the, the exact notes that are written. Let's yeah. put it that way. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Any ideas? You know, I'm gonna. Well, have, should I was should gonna it say. should it have an introduction or not? So in my mind, I actually don't think that an introduction is really necessary. Um, I think that. The uh, rhetorically speaking, the main theme, part A and B, work would work really well as the A theme. You know, it it kind of gets you started. It, it very much feels like an introduction, and so I think that that would be a really good choice for the A theme. Uh, and the very it's first an interesting thing thought, even though it's not even though it's not Williams's music. I think it's one of the Newmans, the uh, patriarch of the Newman family, whose name is escaping me. Alfred. Alfred. Yeah, um, he did the 20th Century Fox logo fanfare, right? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, he did. I, I believe so. But um, also, people uh, draw the comparisons to the Corn Gold score to the opening Star Wars music. Oh, uh, yeah. King was that, uh, the, No, the Seahawk, right? It was like King's Throne or King's Horse or something about a king. 
Okay. We're, we're going to get killed know. in the comment section. <laughs> yeah. No, this information <laughs> off the, the Star Wars like enthusiasts are just going to annihilate us. <laughs> I think it's the Kingsman. Oh, no, I don't know. Someone can. I thought, someone it, was, I thought, it, I thought it was the Seahawk, but okay. Bro, I've never seen the movie punk. yet. So. Yeah. So that that would be probably an option if we wanted an introduction. That would just be a suggestion. We could have the fanfare. <laughs> Oh, I see. Twentieth Century Fox, yeah, um, or not? It's that that's sort of optional. That's less important. The issue, I think, with having the A and B theme be the let me go back to the the themes list here. I got these themes from a, a blog, um, which I'll put in the description. The person who organized these all, thanks to them, for getting their name at the moment. They have divided the main theme into part A and part B. So they have buh, 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 da, 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 as part A and then part B is buh, buh, da, buh, da, 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 da. Now, the question is here, do we really divide these as an A and B theme or do we see this as one long theme like how Tchaikovsky writes themes? I see it as one long theme and I think he kind of recalls it in the same way throughout the film like even in the throne like in the award ceremony he kind of like throws it in there in the middle of of the throne room theme there's also okay. simply more opportunities for development with more melodic content later on so by the time we're we're in the development section it's very very useful to have a an a theme that has multiple different sort of characters that still match each th each other. Um, they sort of mirror each other within themselves. So, you know, there's it, it even though it's that melody or the, I'm sorry, the main theme part B, which is in the orange, even though that passes on to the strings and is more lyrical as opposed to fanfare, that can still be manipulated in ways that either flip, flip that idea orchestrationally to where it, it has more March-like quality to it or uh, vice versa with part A. But I think having both of those constituting the A theme of the Sonata form, it's just downstream. You're just going to be in a lot better position creatively. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I generally, it's a very forgiving uh, motif or theme. It's a bit longer to be a motif, a bit too long for a motif. It's forgiving in that it has a lot of variation to it. So it has a lot of different components. So it has intervallic leaps and it has sort of the, those triplet figures, lots of things that you could sequence, modulate. Uh, you could, you know, with sort of if you do free imitation or what is it in English that when, in fugues? It's a, like a tonal answer. Is that what it's called in English? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, or free freie imitation is in German. That you could you could sort of change the the interval relationships. The other thing I wanted to mention is something that's in my the John Williams video I made years ago. This melody is actually if you just take the notes and organize them rhythmically differently. Da, 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 da. If you just move the da, da, down an octave. Da, 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 and add an extra tone da, but we get the melody to et <laughs> nice oh right yeah version of it yeah yeah, yeah. my pro so I, I i agree with like the how much you can the development potential of this of this theme it uh for me i i don't really i didn't really look at it as a first movement type of of theme mm -hmm. I, I basically saw like i mean yeah, we don't have to go off the actual keys here. It, it everything changes throughout the film, but like the force theme and the main theme kind of seem like like you have the force theme kind of a minor variation or the main theme a major variation of the force theme or vice versa. And I saw it as like a so you have like a I don't know, just based on the examples that we have here, like it's a symphony in F minor or something and then you have like the main theme be like the triumphant kind of finale so i, I saved that for the fourth movement in my uh diagram. i actually agree with you and there was this was a suggestion i was thinking about making that that it, you sort of go like uh beethoven's fifth symphony have, have like a heroic finale we can we can think about that for a bit well and um, there's there's the tchaikovsky fifth symphony too so if we do go yes. back to the idea of having an introduction and mm -hmm. 
know, like, you know, the, the, in the Tchaikovsky fifth, like he teases out the, the last movement theme. So slapping that on at the beginning of a symphony play, you know, Tchaikovsky does it with like low clarinets and by the end of it, it's, you know, 2d and everyone's blowing their brains out, you know, I mean, not like they're the, ever, the whole orchestra is loud. Um, isn't it like oh, yeah, strings or something in the fourth movement? Is that what you're talking about? I vaguely remember. So, sorry, da, say it again. Da, 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 da. Is that yes. the, is that the theme you're talking about? Yeah. Yes, that's played by like a solo clarinet, and you know, muted strings at the beginning of of the Tchaikovsky Fifth, and that's one of the things that I think that is cool about William's themes, is that you can apply all of you know, Henry. You mentioned that like you were saying about the possibilities for the rhythmic and intervallic development in something, you can literally slap on the tricks that Tchaikovsky uses to almost any one of these themes, minus the cantina and the Jawa stuff. And you'll get something that sounds remarkably like Tchaikovsky. I mean, like Tchaikovsky does those sorts of things all the time. Yeah, for sure. And how he handles like chromaticism, like the runs and everything. Yeah, precisely, precisely. Yeah. And and I mean, even in even in his sixth symphony, he uses the the runs he's using in the development of the strings are simply the intervals of the A theme in the, in his in the first movement of his sixth symphony. You can do all of that with with these main four. You can do it with the force theme. You can do it with. Um, the main the main theme part a and main theme part b they they all lend themselves really 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 effectively so if we're gonna if let's put aside for the moment if we want the main theme for the first movement or fourth movement what do we think pairs nicely in the exposition with the main theme so what would be the b theme to the in the exposition should it be slow or fast the easiest thing to say is that the, the B theme needs to contrast the A theme. So what I've always heard is that the B theme should be, you know, what was written in the, the sort of the German source I have from the late 19th century, um, mentions that the the B theme or Seitentema in an exposition needs to be more, needs to be lyrical. Gesanglich uh, would be the German word, something that you would, that you could st- Sing the melody too. So if you think of like the Waldstein Sonata, um, you have that sort of like aggressive beginning, r- repetitive, um, uh, and then the, the Seiten Thema or B theme is that lyrical. So generally it should be a, let's, to put it in simple terms, a contrasting theme, very contrasting. So we could we could try and look for something that's lyrical that would pair nicely with this. I feel like we're talking about wines <laughs> that would pair <laughs> nicely with the A theme. <laughs> well, I think if we're going for lyrical, Princess Leia's theme would be yes. uh, yeah. good there. Um, it does open with that large leap of a sixth, which isn't the most singable thing. Generally, it's very stepwise motion, which is what we would want. Um, and the character of its theme too, the, the, if, if we were to go with, say, the main theme as our A theme, opening with that perfect fourth, you know, opening with a six then sort of gives you a bit of a contrast immediately. Um, yeah, I think I like I like that idea actually a lot. If we had the main theme and then I'm going to write this down so that we, we sort of have an idea. A is the main theme, B is Leia's theme. I don't think the force theme works as a uh second fiddle theme it's it's it, it wants to, for me it wants to be the main theme of a movement in my opinion well and the other with thing there too up, yeah. is, is that they would also be opening with the same uh leap of a fourth and so you would you wouldn't necessarily know is this are we bringing back the main theme just minus that little triplet thing at the beginning but between the fourth okay. theme and the main theme, you would have a little i think mm-hmm. opening it would be a little too similar yeah. To, uh, what to, about the throne room theme as as a as a uh, to pair with the main theme? I see that as a final movement theme again. Um, I don't. Yeah. Okay. My my only uh, looking ahead hear. to the rest of the symphony. My only um, quibble would be uh, 
that Leia's theme would be incredibly useful as a as a slow movement, whether that comes as th number two, movement two or three or whatever, three probably. It's like, obviously you, I, I my personal thought or, or fear, whatever, is that you don't want to burn it too quickly. Um, there might be another way for the B theme of the exposition of the first movement to take the throne room theme as lyrical. If we're only taking the notes, there's definitely a way to make that more aria-like. Just a thought. Yeah, what I wanted to clarify, like, are, are we able to kind of modify things a little bit within the themes to maybe, obviously there's like a lot of different versions of the same stuff already available that Williams uh, did, like you would include Leia's theme in like the shootout between uh, the rebels or whatever, but like uh, yeah, you mean yeah. you mean over over the, the 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 ravine and the Death Star that scene, I think, or when they like swing right. over. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, or yeah, like a, a bunch of this, or like he'll throw in the main theme and like pretty random, like like a snippet of the main theme in in different points. Yeah, no, I, I I think it's we're just sort of discussing the themes. I'd also divorce them sort of from the key signatures that he's written them in. Obviously, he had to he had to construct this for a movie, not not for a symphony. So we're just looking at the motifs as as they are. Yeah, I mean, like to uh, Stephen's point, I think Leia's theme could work. Like may, maybe um, I don't know how you guys feel about like multi movement stuff, but like um, kind of the way Berlioz used that love theme and he like had a version of it in a waltz and a version of it. Like um, he, he had that different, like uh, extremely long phrase theme in his symphony fantastique, Good but yeah, like a, a slow mo moment to like a tender moment in the scherzo or something. I like Very that. Idea. Uh -huh. the, sort the, of, reprisal, the reprisal is totally a viable strategy. If we feel like we're limited based on the fact that we got to fill out three more movements after this one. Yeah. Right. So one, was, one, and so one more thing that um, just lending um, credence to the idea that Princess Leia's thing could work well as a slow movement. Um, we all know that John Williams would take his movie themes and then arrange them into suites for concert performance. Um, the Star Wars suite, it's a five movement work uh, and it uses Princess Leia's theme in very much like a slow movement. Uh, so the way that John Williams has treated this theme in his own concert arrangements of his works is very similar to how you might present a slow movement. Yeah, that's what that would be my only issue too, because I was I was thinking from the beginning that the Princess Leia is probably going to be the slow movement. So I think probably the main theme with the throne room would probably be the best uh, course of action. Can I um, even, you know, if we only take the notes and the rhythm rhythms that are there, and if you mm -hmm. were to pass this and say like, look, you know, molto cantabile, you know. And 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 the B theme is played like this. Da 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 da. You know what I mean? Like it's it doesn't. It's yeah. not, you you see what I'm saying? Like if if you do it like that, um, with the correct tempo and rubato indica indications, it doesn't have to. You know, we know the theme so well because of how it's the throne room thing where it's like it starts out kind of as a march. And it continues as a march. So, mm -hmm. sure, sure, yeah, yeah. I think it's a very the lyrical there, melody. Yeah, I think the issue there is that once we start really modifying the rhythms, um, here we they start really becoming entirely different themes. Uh, when you listen to the film, when you listen to the film, you know John Williams will mess with the rhythms, but they usually retain some sort of relative proportion to each other. So I think if we if we start taking it out of that context of a march too far by modifying the rhythms, it becomes an entirely okay. different theme, even though the intervallic content could remain the same. What about Imperial Motif as a B theme? I liked that one. I actually wrote that down as a as a B theme. Yeah. Dum, 
because um, because you could sort of like lose the energy from the you know the way the main theme in the movie goes is that the 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 sort of the text disappears and then you have that sort of like uh melting i don't know the exact instrumentation i, I think there's like triangles and and, and whatnot that, that sort of like melts yeah. the, you know and, and then it pans down to what whatever's going on in space that that you could slowly move into the sort of complete contrast to the main theme yeah i think that's a good mm-hmm. option i think it might require a bit more writing because right now it very much is just a motif it doesn't really stand alone as a theme um, so it would require additional mm-hmm. music, I think, to complete some sort of, you know, traditional musical structure. Like now I think it works as like a four bar phrase. So like, yeah, add, tagging on like another four or six bars or something to like turn it into like a real theme that you can shop around. That that would be a good idea. Yeah, I think I think what's an interesting idea is that if we use the imperial motif, uh, one it reminds me heavily of the Arabian dance from the Nutcracker Suite. I don't yes. know if anybody yes. else heard of that. Um, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, so I mean, kind of like think of the, if we just sort of graft this melody onto that, that's sort of the potential of this melody, in my opinion. How does that go? Duh, isn't it like basically the same like da 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 in the same like trill figure, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. What did John Williams like mean this? by adopting an Eastern thing, an Eastern motif as the bad guys? <laughs> <laughs> and with all that sand, um, too, what was he thinking? Yeah. So, I I actually am going to put this down for the moment because I think it's the best option we have going forward. Because we're otherwise you kind of run out of. I think it also lends itself to be. Um, We've also got the Death Star motif, which I don't... Do we have an example of that anywhere? It's just bum, ba ba ba. I think everybody yeah. knows that. The, the example is, is Benjamin's, Benjamin's War Requiem. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there you go. Yeah, where does that even fit in? I mean, other than just sort of an accent, it's in my opinion, it's it's, it's kind of... Yeah, it's it's so short that... um, You know, I, I one option, uh, I think is it could be used as sort of like a very short sort of introduction um, if you were to use the main theme as your... Oh, let's uh, save that maybe uh, Let's save that maybe for the scherzo. Yeah, I was going to say that's another uh, place where it could work very well for us. Okay, so f- for now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tack on main theme as A theme, so both, both part A and part B of the main theme. And then somehow we get from that it sort of it melts into the imperial motif which which needs perhaps some more more music to it but we could say that those might be the two here that 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 we could wed together for the first first movement or maybe last movement we'll see well, we can we can discuss that later i'm going to put that down are, are we a, on a mostly an agreement for this mostly uh, yeah i was going to say i think i think our biggest point of disagreement might actually come in the slow movement so whenever we get to there, I think we'll have an interesting discussion. Well, that's what's coming up next anyway. So um, for now, the thing with the, the first movement is that if we take the main theme and use the imperial motif as the B theme, then, you know, all the ways you can develop those in a, in a, in a development is, 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 I think, evident, especially with the main theme. But my thought was the optional coda that generally I think is, is, is more of like a last movement thing. For symphonies, uh, like an extended coda, would be more like the end credits. What that does with the motif, the Star Wars motif. I'll, I'll just play that shortly, so people who haven't seen Star Wars in a while—I mean, everybody knows the end credits—but I'll just play it a little bit. Sort of that you would build up and then that would be the coda that, that would then end the piece within, I don't know, maybe like two minutes. That's just an idea. Yeah, I think save the end credit stuff for a last movement coda. It's sort of like a uh, uh, um, a retrospective or something of, of, of what came before in the piece. Yeah. Okay. Well, and especially if you That's... think about it, you know, if it isn't a movie, this isn't a movie. So we're not hearing these themes for, you know, kind of all play over each other for a whole hour. You know, you would right. have heard that 
opening main theme, which is the building blocks of that end credits, it'll be like, oh, I remember that from the beginning. And this is, you know, something that, especially once we get into the 19th century and the more romantic composers, we're starting to do and thinking about how they can unify their movements using um, motives and ideas that uh, crop up in each of them. I'll just say an interesting example of this is in in, in Beethoven's uh, 13th piano sonata um, in E flat. There's the third movement is is uh, a slow movement is the slow movement, and the fourth movement, which is sort of like a fugato ends with the theme from the third movement. It's sort of like the third movement and fourth movement are pushed together. And the fourth movement, once he gets through the, his sort of fugato, he adds the uh, third movement back at the end to sort of create like a ternary form out of two movements. Um, that's sort of an example of that, if people are curious. Yeah, thread- threading all of these themes or some of these themes across movements I think is in keeping with the idea that we're talking about romantic era symphonies and it just, but it's also cool. Like I think romantic era composers did this because it's super rad. Like it's, (laughs) it's like, it's like a flex on their own themes, you know? Yeah, definitely. All right. So I'm going to leave that for now, because basically sonata form is the, the difficult part of sonata form is writing like, 10 to 20 minutes with two themes. And I think this is why a lot of romantic composers actually opted for three themes sometimes in the exposition. But let's leave it at two themes, keep things simple, and uh, and move on to the second movement. We in agreement? Yeah, in- unless you're Mahler and you want your first movement to be 35 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, so... Now, I've chosen for the second movement a uh, large ternary form. Other options for symphony second movements uh, or slow movements. I mean, the second movement can also be the scherzo, but for now, let's, let's just keep the second movement as the slow movement. And there are a couple of options. I wanted to choose large ternary form to keep this sort of like informative, this video, because uh, a lot of composers also write the second movement in sonata form, but we just discussed sonata form. And so I thought large ternary form would be a good form to choose. Obviously, you can also do theme and variations, which I've seen a lot. Um, A couple of things I'd like to discuss. Once again, the stuff that's written in orange on screen are optional. But I generally like to say that maybe we try and figure out how to get two themes per section. So in large ternary form, you have an A section, a B section, an A section, obviously. But sometimes those can be subdivided into different sections so i think like brahms will sometimes have a large ternary form where like the a section will be actually subdivided into an a b a theme so it'll be like a ternary form within a ternary form so i've just kept things simple so um, we can either do an a section that's just the a theme or an a section that's an a and b theme and a B section that's a either, depending on if we have two themes for the A section, a B and a, a C and D theme or a, a B and C theme, et cetera. So here's where I think the controversies will start in this stream because there are two options, in my opinion, to go for the second movement. And one of the issues with the Star Wars motifs is that when we're on Tatooine in the movie, John Williams decides to go like, He's either going for Stravinsky, Rite of Spring, or like weird, weird, um, like Soviet composer melodies. I was going to say, you know, and I don't think we have an example uh, uh, score for it, but, you know, there's also the Dune Sea, um, which is... Right, I can play that in the background, and and I might be able to find the the score to that and, and put it in in post, so... I'll play that now, which is, I think, very, very, very similar. And I think other people have pointed this out, you know, of nauseam times on YouTube, is that it sounds very much like uh, Sacco de Ponton from Stravinsky. But I'll I'll just play it. A 
Okay, so what are we going to do with the second movement, guys? I just wanted to also defend John Williams's honor for a second because I I think a lot of people don't realize how off like composers mu movie composers are almost always working off of temp tracks like th that the directors are editing with, and so it's very likely that Lucas. I mean I I think um I think we know for sure that he was tracking with the Corn Gold um, theme for for the main theme anyway. Like at the beginning of the movie, I think he also tracked with um host uh mars from the planets so it's he he might have been um like editing around stravinsky for this part of the film too so he's not stealing stuff he's just getting it as close to what the director wants without like blatantly ripping them off so i guess it's a semantic he, argument but yeah and even 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 if the, even without the temp tracks i mean grow up people <laughs> I, 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 I never, I've never under, I've never really understood the, the 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 outrage that melodies might be a little bit similar. Well, okay, then he's he's looking towards good influences, and he, you know how much time, how much time did he probably have to compose too? You know, you have to also take that into consideration. You know, Beethoven could take like three summers while he goes out into the countryside to write a symphony. Well, John Williams doesn't have that luxury. I was gonna say John Williams had about ten weeks to write this score. Yeah, so For do that Walt. and be and be yeah. and be and completely original. And, and writing by hand too. You know, he, he had no computers, yeah. no none of that. And I think he orchestrated the first one himself, correct? Uh, he had orchestrators working with him, but it was uh, but because of the very close timeline, it was basically he's writing the music and he's orchestrating along with his main orchestrator. Now, Stephen, I think you might know this better because you 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 know um, Williams's orchestrator a bit better than yeah oh, you, you, uh, yeah Conrad Pope. Pope yeah yeah you, now if if I remember because I I also took the sort of master class with him what he said and I hope I'm remembering this correctly is that Williams writes his stuff for two pianos or he writes it on it like a uh, uh, quadruple staged score so as if two pianos like like a four-handed score and then he annotates in between which instrument should you know play what's and he gives that then to the orchestrator um yeah. is that am i remembering that correctly yeah yeah that's that's essentially right is that after he comes up with the themes and he had you know especially in this time he had that sort of old school projectory thing that was like on a crank or whatever it is. I don't even know what the hell it's called because it's so old at this point, but um, yes, four stabs, sometimes five, if you needed to explode something out. And th I, to be honest, the thing really was kind of, kind of orchestrated by him, but not all of the notes are filled in. If that makes sense. Like, and his orchestrators too. I mean, like I, I as we're talking, like I, I pulled the score to the, to the right of spring and it's um, at, Rehearsal Mark 79 is this Dune C thing or whatever. And it's like, look, yes. I mean, the, the orchestration is almost identical and the harmonic language is almost identical. But like there's, I mean, aside from a couple Prokofiev scores, which might have been incredibly difficult to get a hold of even in the 70s, I'm, I'm sure the movie studios could get them a copy of something, but they were probably just not at hand. Look, I mean there's only one way to do sort of this alien world kind of thing. And it's all of these oddly stacked intervals and woodwinds with harmonics in the strings, you know, Divisia three, you know, Divisia four pizzicato muted trumpet stuff that's moving in, you know, that are all moving on these, on in these like weird intervallic ways. Okay. So Stravinsky, Stravinsky does something like that, but he doesn't own that he was the first one to do it. And so maybe people associate mentally with the fact that Stravinsky was a first person to do this, but he, he really doesn't own it. And there's no other way to get alien world like that without going full blown atonal perhaps. But even then that's not going to, that's not going to register with audiences. That'll just, that could just sound bad. You know, th it's the only way to, to, to push something like this. But yes, I mean, look, he, 
it's for it's four stabs. He 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 writes out he labels you know FL for flute on this run. He might write a run and it have like ten stems on it or whatever with you know three uh you know three flags or whatever in a scribbly line that goes up and then the ending top note. The orchestrators know what notes need to get filled in from the low A to the high A or high E or whatever whatever the whatever the pitches are. You, you see what yeah, it's you, also you know what on a, you know it's also unimportant anybody who knows uh rachmaninoff's uh second piano concerto know that he he writes the you know nine and eight groupings of notes just with one you know one flag but rhythmically speaking it's it's wrong but every pianist knows what what's meant there precisely um, people know what yeah, people know what i'm talking about yeah Perfect example. So that kind of shorthand, especially like, you know, whatever this was, 10 weeks to get it to get it written. And then you got to go to Abbey Road. So, you know, you really can't look like an idiot once you're there with the London Phil, you know, the orchestrators know what's up and they and they know what to do. And Williams goes back and he approves them. You know, it's just you got to have in this kind of situation, you have to have assistance and people who are expert level musicians with incredible ears that are that are just that are just gonna know that are just gonna know what you mean and are gonna know how to how to pull out the atmosphere that you're trying to create okay so it's always good to get some some background info so if we're gonna if we're gonna structure our slow movement here what i was trying to say before is that we have two options to go we've got the princess leia princess leia option which is probably more in keeping with the romantic symphony concept or we have the experimental odd sort of jawa and um dune c uh second movement <laughs> i really thoughts? like the dune c i really like the dune c jawa second movement idea I think it uses a lot of themes that you know, will provide a lot of contrast. And, um, and then it frees up Princess Leia's theme to be used in other contexts as well. Could we hear them again by chance, just to get them? Yeah, back what's the, to... the, the Jawa theme? So I'll do, let's, should I start with the Dune Sea again? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. So imagine we've just ended the first movement, you know, with the, with the main theme. Let's get Maybe the first movement comes to an end like this with a little slow horn movement, blah, blah, blah. We don't know. We don't have to get into the details. And then comes. And uh, let me go through the jaw with themes. Okay, there's something else we're also forgetting. The Tuscan Raiders, which I don't think is here, which is like really atonal. But it's it's it sort of reminds me of the uh, the cues from Jerry Goldsmith's uh, Planet of the Apes, the the '60s Planet of the Apes. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I don't think there's any place in this in the the Star Wars symphony for that, but it's 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 part of the whole Tatooine stuff. Yeah, I think it would just sort of, you know, it, it's it's very percussive that uh, the uh, Tuscan Raiders and the Sand People, and it yeah. feels like it would really take pull us into the mid twentieth century. Like all of a sudden, Varez decided to uh, take over <laughs> yeah. uh, <this> composition. <laughs> 
Okay, so Tuscan Raiders are out. But the, um, there was another, I guess it's more of a motif, but um, it comes up like in three cues. I think it's like, um, they're not exactly the same, but um, whenever Luke, whenever they're in the um, like dune buggy floaty thingy, um, what do you call it? The like, that red thing that floats and they're like going, they go uh, to find R2 and the land speeder. Land speeder, yeah. yeah. Like there's the scene where they're going, it's like, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if that was like a quick variation of the DS era or what was going on there, but it, it, they sound really similar in those three cues. Um, I don't know if you have an audio of that, but. I think I that's a bit contrast. quicker, though. Yeah, yeah, maybe more scherzo, uh, or if at all. I love the contrast of yeah. the instrument of the orchestration, and for like if for like a, a second movement too. There's like that. It, it sounds like muted, like marimba or something in the first theme, and then he uses tuba, tr straight mute trumpets. Like, it'd be well, a good I think I think the. I think the Jawa theme, the first theme, really reminds me of something that, like, maybe Prokofiev would have written, the melody at least. Totally. Totally. What's curious about all this is because it does take place on a planet that is supposed to be more primitive than the rest of the universe, right? And if we're thinking about this in a symphonic context, and perhaps the symphonic pro the context ha does have a program to it of some sort, We've got sort of our heroic and opening opening deals in the first movement, civilized society, um, high culture, high values, whatever it is. And then if we're sort of taking all the Tatooine music and making that the second movement, it's, it's kind of a, like a, a curious program emerges about new world, old world, or post world or post order and then that would hypothetically come back with a scherzo and then a heroic ending. It's, it's, it's a cool it, concept. You know what, you know what this is reminding me of? Uh, there's, there's a composer in the 19th century that does these juxtapositions and it's Saint-Saëns. So if you look at his like Egyptian piano concerto, it has very like boilerplate romantic first and third movements. Not boil. I mean, I, I don't want to say boilerplate to Sansol because I really like Sansol, but um, you know what I mean. Just sort of like typical romanticism right before impressionism, the sound to the music. Uh, but the middle movement, it has the double harmonic scale, and then it has this like weird little like um, almost Japanese uh, section towards the end of the second movement. I think I've, I've sent the score to you guys once in, in, in discord, just cause I really, I really think the second movement's interesting. So it's kind of like that. So th there is a precedent in the 19th century to have this sort of like bizarre, almost like world music departure from romanticism or like a rustic movement compared to the sort of, as you said, like high culture metropolitan, uh, first movement. Sure. It, it, it's provincial at that point. I, you know, that's why uh, I feel like some of the, even in the classical era, some of the, some of the composers would put a dance movement in, right. You know, this is the, the, you know, some of those dances, in, you know, emerged and Henry, you'd know more about this than I do, but many of those dances, I assume emerged from the countryside before they were appropriated by nobility. Is that not right? Yeah. Most of them, if not all of them, I mean, I mean very few of them, I think, the Polonaise was is is a very is one of the only ones that I've read about that was a, a like uh, always a noble dance. Otherwise, they always come from you know from Hicksville somewhere in in Europe. Though <laughs> the Spanish ones are interesting because sometimes they come from the New World or they or they're related to sort of older North African music. But that's a whole different topic. But yes, generally they come from folk traditions except as i said the polonaise that's the only one i think i've read about that that's uh that's like a noble dance so so then yes the function yeah. then is if if we do a movement like this next there's um a long tradition of this in classical music even before the romantic era there's the whole turkish rage in, in vienna because they were bordering the ottoman empire back then the sort of like the 
all of the composers who who had sort of appropriated don't like that word because of its connotations but you adopted i prefer sort of turkish motifs and ideas and melodies or or sort of like gypsy music or hungarian stuff also yeah that's an interesting idea uh, idea of like how, a way to juxtapose the like imperial like space nobility with the uh, <laughs> tattooing like people who are literally just c collecting and reselling s scrap metal and <laughs> or stealing it and like yeah like that's kind of the countryside as 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 steven said yeah so let's let's go back to the I'd say A theme is, oh no, what wrong one? Um, for the second movement now. A theme, probably Doom C. I think that's the great way to begin the second movement, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. Um, actually, I what I wanted to ask you guys, how do you feel about like viewing this? Because we're, we're borrowing themes and motifs from our, I mean, it's movie music. How do you guys feel about viewing the symphony as like, the hero's journey, like as having a programmatic kind of progress, uh, progression, uh, into the, final well, that's kind of like the movie, isn't it? Though? Well, yeah, but like, so, um, I guess it wouldn't be entirely chronological, but like maybe the second movement is, um, you have like pretty much all the tattooing stuff. And then, because I think in the movie they go back and forth between like, she sees Alderaan getting destroyed and then they're still in like the cantina, like it, it goes back and forth, but I, I guess for continuity of the of the symphony work, like having maybe the first movement be like all the stuff that's happening up in space, and then the second movement, Luke. So it's like Leia separate Leia and Luke separated for the first and second movement, and then like the third movement's like the, all the battle stuff, and then the fourth movement's like triumphant. We blew up the Death Star in that little specific hole. That you're not supposed to touch and it, it exploded well it that's kind of interesting that um that our potential symphonic form actually kind of mirrors what william set up in the as his uh, cues are set up chronologically as well even if he teases something early that's kind of interesting because if the movie goes if the movie is like you outlined zach then it is kind of matching what we've already sort of embarked on and it's probably worth pointing out that williams has done a pretty remarkable job um I, in other words this is no coincidence perhaps that um that the way things are l laid out uh could easily be put into the form of a symphony yeah, it's kind of what i, well, what I, I think... was thinking yeah when i when i listened to it i'll, I'll, I'll... I'll let you speak in a moment lower. Um, when when I came up with the idea for the stream is that it's almost like a symphony, and I feel like it would because I understand why composers, um, film composers, turn their movie music into suites sometimes because it's just it, it it makes the most sense. It's easiest to organize. Um, I'm thinking of uh, also what 19th century composers did with their ballets, but. The one person who did do a symphony was Howard Shore for Lord of the Rings. Now, I don't know how he structured it, but I remember actually enjoying it when I saw it in concert once. Now, I'd have to look at the score and see if he actually really went into the trouble of actually structuring it like a symphony, which I don't think he did. But, yeah, I was thinking that that I think it, this, the Star Wars music is almost dying to be put into a symphony, the way it's structured. Yeah, and I think if we... You know, if we think about just what Star Wars is, it's a hero's journey. And so the themes and the way they're presented, where they're presented, have a sort of rhetorical function. So the reason the main theme works so well at the beginning of the movie is because it has this kind of opening character to it. So the, the fact that we're, we are gravitating towards putting that at the beginning of this symphony, I think, is perfectly natural. And the fact that all of our, our kind of the way that we're structuring the symphony, where we're gravitating towards putting these themes, kind of mapping that, um, or at least matching that hero's journey that uh, Williams scored with the, the film. 
All right. So I think, I think that, I think we're kind of in an agreement for the, the, the overall theme of the entire piece. If we're going to structure the second movement now. So if we start with our A section being the Dune C, which, which has all this like muted trumpets and, and, and whatnot that Stephen discussed before, do we need a B theme in the A section or we just stick with, you know, what, what he's done with the Dune C and move I on would to the B section? The- I would say I would leave the Dune Sea as sort of like our A section. I think there's enough musical in material entirety, yeah. there in ways that I we can agree. expand it. Then we can use the three Java themes, which sort of, they kind of follow each other very naturally. So I and don't know how B you would section. feel about as the B section. So, you know, perhaps that's too much melodic material in the B section, kind of without variation. But I think there's at least a very good argument that we can make that Jawa theme one and two can belong together as sort of like a larger musical structure with uh, theme three contrasting that. Henry, yeah, I have okay, a... So you could say... Like, what, like, yeah. Uh, so th- I, I've noticed this uh, a lot from composers. The person I'm thinking of specifically is Hendemith. Um, in his second movement of his symphony for band um he does he Don't has like piece, so i'm not gonna be much yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course but the but just to the the uh, form is he has the a a theme then the b theme and then kind of the third part is combining the a a theme and the b theme together almost like they were written kind of in like in, in counter contrapuntal relationship from the beginning but just split as yeah. they were introduced so is there like a formal term for that that you know of, or is would it just be like A, B, C, or A, B? It'd probably be like a compound variation. binary or something. Compound That's binary. what I'd probably call like it. A, B, and then A, B uh, or something? Yeah, no, like a, com- a compound form. So it's it's mixes of different forms. So you, you'd have a binary form that would be A, B, and then... I'm just saying compound binary. That might somebody in the somebody who will probably rage in the comments. But if, does anybody disagree with that terminology I've invented? No disagreement for me. Crazy idea. If you know the answer, don't rage. Just tell us, and that'll be nice. Yeah, I yes, I prefer that. I mean, we, we aren't walking encyclopedias. Some people in the comments are like, you know, the the. I'm thinking of the like the 2000 circa 2010 rage comic of the why guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, 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 I read them sometimes, and I'm like, well, that's you. You have some interesting information in your comment, but you could be polite, anyways. Be civilized. Yeah, be civilized. Most people are. There are a few though. Obviously, you have no idea what you're talking about. I've I've read that one a few times. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. Obviously. All right. So one, two, three, Jawa is the B theme. I think exactly in that order. And then we go back to the uh, Dune C as the recapit- recapitulation of the A theme. Maybe done with a, some variation, which is usually what you do. Is there anything we, we might want to tack on as an afterthought for the uh, repetition of the A section? I have something that I would ban from the symphony and especially this movement since we're using all of the <laughs> all of the content from Tatooine or whatever i would just cantina band is is yeah. jazz music and it's just out of control it would be either the funniest symphony in the world if if you just insert <laughs> that somewhere like, like off stage you like <laughs> yeah, <Cantina> off stage <laughs> You, you change it. You change it to minor, and you make it really slow. Maybe we can. Yeah, like a dirge, a funeral dirge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I totally agree. I just have it there because maybe we would have uh, thought of a place to put it. It's, uh, even like Cantina Band, uh, Cantina Band Two. Da, da, da. Uh, now there's no there's no there's no place for that yeah i was worried we were gonna have a debate but yeah it's it's diegetic anyway so it seems like keeping it to like the score makes more sense but yeah it seems like we're all in agreement zach for the audience what does diegetic mean (laughs) oh yes so it's the music that's taking place in the in the film itself so they're in a cantina there's a band playing 
and they're playing the same song uh, over again. And, and the characters hear it. The characters hear the yes. music that's going on. You, you learn something every day. So back to the the form of the second movement. So do we think there's anything worthy of being in a, like a like a period to the the movement, some sort of theme or 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 idea that we can tack onto the Dune scene as sort of a an ending to the recapitulation of the A theme, or just leave it safe for now? The Dune scene is our recapitulation. One potential idea is that you could have the ending of this movement go into the next movement um, where it doesn't attack attack yeah that's interesting yeah hmm, hmm. I mean, usually you do that into the fourth movement but i don't know we can do whatever we want right i was just yeah, saying that might be a really sure. uh, great way to sort of bring in the death star motif thank you i was just going to say that because yeah. then you could bum, ba, 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 bum, two, bum, point, two bum, points for robert bum, Good idea. Ba, 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 ba. yeah i'm hearing it yeah. Well, and even from an orchestration standpoint, too, because the Dune Sea stuff is very kind of like wind heavy. And so that lets your brass kind of sit there and be ready to really, you know, have the energy Felt for a scherzo that I think is probably going to be very brass heavy. Okay, so that brings us to our scherzo now. So let me just briefly discuss scherzo form for those who haven't seen the video. Scherzo form is basically theme, uh, basically minuet form. Uh, sped up a bit. Um, watch my video on form about the scherzo where I actually explain that it's not, it's a bit more than a minuet, um, but, or minuet, how, I, I, I always say minuet because <laughs> minuet is the, is how you pronounce it in English. Um, but it's, it's, it's basically that. And the idea of the trio section, so you have a scherzo, which is the what would be the minuet as an A theme, B theme, generally three quarter time. However, Beethoven writes scherzos in two quarter time, or I think maybe just one, but he he wrote one in two quarter time. And there is a bunch of uh, I think Soviet composers. I think what they call for their sort of scherzo placeholder movements are toccato scherzos, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Sort of, sort of like the uh, if you think of uh, like Shostakovich's Eighth Symphony, it's not in three quarter time, but it's definitely there as the scherzo movement. So now the trio generally it needs to have a delicate feel to it. So it needs to be perhaps less instrumentation or more melodic. Again, the term trio comes from a trio of woodwinds that used to play in the middle of minuets, but it should be very a, 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 a huge contrast to the scherzo. So that's usually, they're both subdivided into two parts. So scherzo has an A and a B section, trio has a, generally a C and a D section, although I've seen trios that just have uh, one section, so one theme. And then you just the capo back to the beginning for a scherzo. Unless it's a romantic scherzo, then, they, then the scherzo, as it's repeated, can be altered slightly, or maybe there's a like coda added on if you think of uh, Chopin's scherzos. Okay, so what are we gonna what are we gonna do with the scherzo? If we do the attacka, I think what Robert was suggesting is we have the Death Star motif tacked onto the end of the Dune C, um, and then we'd probably go right into Tie Fighter Attack, right? Yeah, I think we could sort of have our A and B for that this fast energetic part of the sketch will be our TIE fighter attack and our rebel motif. Um, maybe bring that storm yeah. tro- trooper motif, you know, because that's basically just sort of like, you know, strings just right. kind of sawing away. So you don't have that kind that, of playing underneath. That would be sort of like connective tissue between the melodies. Yeah, yeah that, that could work too. Would you mind playing, um, I, th- I think from our audio, like, library that you sent it's uh the leia theme uh o2 i wrote um i wrote that one down for like i think it had like some other fast i think it might have been like in that fight scene but just in in terms of like having a lighter trio i know we already talked about maybe using that later in the symphony okay
Okay, that's that's such a that's such a trio section to a romantic scherzo if I've ever heard one. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah, I got a especially the build up. Uh, yeah, yeah, the build. I, I got a question about um, our our instrumentation because as we get into like you know stormtrooper motif, tie fighter attack, the size of the orchestra matters, right? I feel like in this, and I know in the Star Wars suite, I think that's only scored for like three trumpets, four horns, this kind of stuff, maybe two tenors and a bass trombone and a tuba. To be honest, it would be incredibly useful to have six horns and it would be incredibly useful to have four trumpets and two tenors and two bass trombones and a tuba. And then the appropriate woodwinds, including like an E flat clarinet on top of the other clarinets you know, two piccolo flutes or having flautists available to switch over to that kind of stuff. Because, you know, the to keep those motors going on a lot of this kind of stuff, it's really useful if you've got six horns as opposed to three uh, for the switching off, dovetailing of parts or passing it to trombones, this kind of stuff. Um, I wanted to... Uh, and, and also just... You know, an assistant principal on this whole thing. Given that, Ex- like, explain the term dovetailing to to uh, my subscribers. I think oh, some, yeah, sure. sometimes terms go over some people's heads, and I, I think it's just it's nice to have industry terms explained. Yeah, for sure. So um, the dovetailing, if you if you look at the stormtrooper motif at the top, it says strings and horns, and there's a uh, there's a triad there. Let's say you would have six horns, horns one, three, and yeah, one, three, and five would play the first measure and then the downbeat of the second measure on that accent, right? That um, accent, that second measure, the other set of horns would then take over, but they all play on the downbeat. So there's an, it's called dovetailing because it overlaps on one note. This is because wind instruments, they have to breathe at some point, but also playing constant eighth notes over a long period of time. Uh, there's a fatigue factor, but then there's also an energy factor. If you have a player, and this is just, you know, mental, like the way it mentally works with musicians, you have a player sitting in the orchestra and they're sitting there and they got one bar and it's fast music. They're going to come in with their entrance with 10 times more energy than the person who's already been playing for three bars or whatever it is, two bars, whatever it is. So you want to you want to find opportunities to dovetail. If you've only got four horns, then you're going to have to have other instruments that have equal power take these things over. And it's, it's hard to do with a triad. My view is that this kind of thing, this is why you really would need six horns. Or like, for example, on the fatigue question, you would maybe want to have an assistant principal trumpet you know, the whole piece is going to open up on a high C. Yes, you're going to get that nailed whenever the London Philharmonic plays your symphony or whatever. But, you know, look, I've heard top flight orchestras uh, not hit that with as much power as you hear in the original recording. You get a second player on there that that can be up there or a high note specialist or a trumpet player that's going to play an E flat trumpet just to make sure that note speaks loud and proud whatever whatever the solution is it depends on your brass section depends on your players you know these these are things to consider i wanted to hear what what you guys thought about having an enlarged orchestra than what we see in the in the suite and it really is going to like be most important in my view on this movement where you've got all this jagged stabby brass all over the place yeah makes sense to me uh, and I just wanted to add that Six Horns is um, John Williams' original instrumentation in the film score. So I think that is, I think, per- per- perfectly appropriate for what we're doing, what we're describing. So I think we the scherzo begins with the Death Star motif. A theme is the TIE Fighter. Stormtrooper is sort of connective tissue. And then the B theme is the Rebel motif. Now... This brings us to the question of the trio. What do we use for the trio? Leia's theme? <laughs> I kind of like the idea of using the imperial motif. It feels very, you know, kind of light and refined and almost classical. 
Oh, you mean the... You have the little trill. Oh, but we had that for the first movement. That's the B theme. Have we used Imperial Attack yet? But what, what, how does well, Imperial happen? Attack is just the just that rhythm. Oh, right. Bum, bum, brum, bum, bum, brum. But isn't that? Oh, right. This is this is Stephen. Stephen. Oh. Stephen and I played played the trumpet. But perhaps Stephen still plays the trumpet. Stephen will notice that I cannot uh, triple tongue, which is why I gave up uh, trumpeting. Bum, bum, da, 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 I can't do it. <laughs> I never. I can never figure it out. <laughs> I, I haven't. Uh, I haven't touched my horn in like way more than a decade. So I think my two tu, tutuku like articulation is probably probably pretty sloppy at this point to be honest two turkey tits that's what i say two turkey tits okay which 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 professor taught you that to taught you that zach it was a horn player from usc uh university of south carolina i think that's what she learned over there and sometimes it depends on what i'm playing sometimes i'll just do the first attack of the triplet with my with like a lip attack and then just do a double tongue but it depends on the rep but okay so the imperial attack is literally just that rhythmic it's like the bar like the bruckner rhythm or something of the symphony or or the uh um the holst mars yeah mars yeah Mars. but because but not above five quarter 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 time yeah Okay. That would be the B theme to the scherzo, in my opinion. Um, uh, which, if if I think there is an example of both of these together, that I'll 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 play. Okay, that I think that's. Did you notice the beginning of this though? The, the beginning here. Uh, in my opinion, this beginning here is the perfect connective tissue between the Doom C and the Scherzo. Absolutely. Definitely. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Okay, back to the to- back to the confusing topic of the trio. How do we figure out the trio? Would the trio be lyrical? I mean, just like if you could play the version of the Imperial attack, uh, attack, because I guess like it has that rebel m- motif, but like elongated. Yeah. I don't know if that would count as like a. I think that could just be part of the the scherzo, though. To be honest, um, the the question is the trio that should be lighter and more lyrical. And Robert's suggestion of the imperial motif might actually be apt here. If we, yeah, it's it's it could be the opportunity for one of those situations to where we do the the romantic era symphony thing, as we recall a theme from a previous movement and and. Uh, insert it into a later movement for um, dramatic arc in effect. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, so the word we have, we, we also need a B theme though. Hmm. I have a feeling like there's more imperial, like 
melody doodles that are strewn throughout the film. I don't have any examples there, but I'm, I'm actually going to play through a few of the ones that um, I just want to mention. I forgot to mention at the beginning. This stream would only be possible with Robert's hard work of cutting all these tracks together. So I want to thank him for that again. Thanks, Robert. You know what? He's actually got. He's actually he's foreshadowing the Imperial March before he even wrote it. Right. Do you hear that there in the in the in the in the in the double basses? Okay. Oh, yeah. Next Imperial motif. last one. Okay, that's that's interesting because it's actually quite it's a variation heavy variation on it. You know, listening to this, I think we might need to um, revise our decision to use the imperial motif as the B theme in the first movement. Yeah, I agree. We'll get back to that. So I think, I think this would work this is for the trio here. What's this? Can we review like the scoreboard, like what we've used so far? Just really quickly. Yeah, I'm 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 writing it down here. So for the first movement, we had for the A. So I'll, I'll open that up. First movement for the exposition, the A theme is the main theme, parts A and B of the main theme. Um, and then the B theme for now, we had the imperial motif, but, but we've decided to maybe scrap that. Now for the second movement, the A theme for the the A section. Let me specific the a section is the dune c the b section is one the first second and third jawa themes the recapitulation is the dune c and that moves into the beginning of the tie fighter attack that bum, 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 because that would sort of work well with the um dune c motif or melody and then then death star and then that would be sort of the introduction. We would add that in between the Death Star and then the TIE Fighter and Rebel motif. And now we're at the trio where we've decided maybe to use the Imperial motif. There was another example of Princess Leia's theme, like a variant of it that was, uh, had a very big orchestration, kind of very lush sounding, it was, but it was faster. I think it might've been uh, Leia, the you second example one? of Leia's thing. Yes. Okay, that little think, that little endings portion to that could be a B theme. Go the ahead, trumpet Robert. thing, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that that that. that seems like it would, I think it would require. But... It would require a lot. It, it doesn't really strike me as much of a theme quite yet. So it would certainly, I it would require more structuring to make it like an actual melody, a tune with a form, to work as a B theme in either the first movement sonata form or in the uh, trio here. 
Yeah, what are we thinking about Leia's theme for the trio? Yeah, I thought we already uh, played that. I, I thought we I thought we decided Leia for the trio, and we were debating the Imperial theme. I'm as the I'm B confused. theme. I'm oh, sorry, as the C trio. and D theme in the trio. Yeah, the so C within and D. the trio section. Yeah, so the C would be Leia, but I'm 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 just not I'm not into the I don't think the I think I think the Imperial motif here just draws too much energy out of the piece. And it's too different. It would have to be altered heavily from what 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 we have from the the score to the film, in my opinion. Because you've got this crazy energy, and then and then even Leia's theme. It's kind of like it's kind of sad to put Leia's theme in the trio here. I'm having my doubts yeah, so about I th- this. Yeah. So I'm thinking. I'm thinking that Leia's theme really belongs in the first movement. Right. Um, okay, as the, as the, as the, okay. I, I might agree with you. What uh, about, I think, is, is there like an orchestration of the four? Basically, I mean, the force theme seems to be like the, like underlying, I mean, it's the force. It's the thing that flows within us all. And it's like, yeah. so maybe, maybe there can be a, a is there a faster, kind of more energetic iteration of that available? I feel like we probably, probably hold on. Yeah. That's more of like a Fugato version of the Force thing. Hold on. Yeah. I think that's the fastest version there is. And it's There's a, also the version yeah, with, the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the DS E-Ray. You know what? This actually I, might work as the trio. Here. A force theme? This version of it. That iteration of it, yeah. Yeah. So you've got that like big energy that we had before. So I don't know, maybe right before this happens, we have the like imperial motif. Uh, not the imperial motif. Sorry, I wanted the stormtroopers. Um. So before those. And then. Some there has to be obviously some sort of connection between those two. That might be for that might be a a introduction to what's coming in the fourth movement. We could think yeah. about that. Yeah. It's such a great score. <laughs> So I'm going to put force theme because it's labeled as force theme five here. Stormtrooper motif. It's just kind of dum, 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 dum. I'm trying to think of uh, where this would fit in, into the scherzo because it's fast. Maybe I mean, just it's an, un- like, uh, it's a texture yeah. that you can yeah. put under anything. Mm-hmm. Like you could probably put, you could probably put the, all these themes. So I don't know. I'm just going to leave the trio as the force theme. I don't think there's really like, a, a, a unless we want to try and like shoehorn the Imperial motif into the trio here. What's also kind of interesting that I always saw from a lot of Williams's action cues is that they all kind of play like scherzos anyway, whether it's, um, whether it's like Indiana Jones or like Minority Report or any of the other Star Wars, like the asteroid field cue, for example, from the next movie, Star Wars movie, um, Empire. They all play like scherzos. And so the benefit of that and what I know that happens in, in those action cues is that 
all of the themes from the other, all the all the motifs get weaved in, depend you know, depending on what's happening on uh, uh, on screen. You know, somebody uses the force to get a lightsaber off the ground, and you know, it teases the force theme, and then you know, there's an immediate modulation whenever you know, they use it to block the hit, and then you know, uh, Boba Fett comes swooping in, and there's a harp gliss. In an octatonic, you know what I mean? Like all of these things are are scherzoy in their in their character, but they weave in all these other things. So I think teasing the force theme in this situation is totally in keeping with the essence of the the music uh, and themes in itself, and also or, or Williams's music, and also in keeping with the idea of how we're structuring our romantic symphony. Um, what if we leave the forest theme here as the trio, have a brief recapitulation? Because what happens with scherzo form generally is that you do you reintroduce scherzo da capo without the uh, repetitions. So you sort of have a shorter scherzo section with the TIE Fighter and Rebel motif. So it's like if it was three to four minutes before, now it's a minute and a half, two minutes. Yeah. And then after that, we have the imperial motif to sort of like cool things down. And then the imperial motif also goes attack into the fourth movement. Cool. That's what, that's what I'm thinking at the moment to sort of, we've, we've kind of like, we've sort of maneuvered around the scherzo a little bit, taken a bit of license. Cause I, I'm I'm not really finding a, a a profound D theme here to the trio. So let me think if 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 we had um like you know usually the trio has two sections. That's just kind of kind of the rule. So if we have the force theme, what could we pair with it? The the if we want to be strict the with idols theme, uh main theme part A pairs with force theme because of the fourth the opening fourth okay so we do a main theme let me play some of the main themes that i have thanks to robert Oh, this is interesting. Right. Oh, this is the cruiser. Yeah. Part, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's that's total scherzo energy there. That you know what? That would be the main theme that would lead us back into the TIE Fighter because it's got that energy. Yeah, it's almost it's the same. The tempo. Tempo. Yeah. You've got that yeah, going. It kind of starts, and then, it, it, yeah, it really anticipates that the return. And then you go. But, but. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. Which which main theme was that? Main theme five. So force theme five and main theme five, as they're listed here. People watching this won't won't know what I'm talking about, but um, just so I, I remember this when we go back, and then tie fighter attack and then we go through the rebel motif again shorter if we structure the piece and then maybe this imperial motif uh attack a thing i have planned my so, only worry is I'm, I'm worried that we've front loaded a little too much with the thematic material and now we're we're not going to have enough we're going to be stuck actually, with scraps for the fourth movement no i don't think so because I'll show you why we still um, we still have the throne room and we still have the force theme. Thr throne room and force theme are this. Oh, the throne room with the uh, da, 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 da. Got it. Uh, yeah. OK. So I was thinking the, the fourth movement, the A theme is the force theme. And then the B theme is the throne room. Yeah, I mean, that's actually almost exactly how it 
appears in um, that scene uh, in the movie. Yeah, let me, let, let me play that, okay? That's interesting because he just uses the B part of the main theme there. Yeah. Cool with me. Hmm. <laughs> but I think you have to have the main theme part A and part B in the same. I don't think you can separate them entirely. Like, um... I think you can if if we thought about this as maybe like just the B theme there. If that was if that was in the development of the first movement sort of tacked on to something else, some sort of other like sequence or something. Yeah. I think I might have just like completely biased myself like in preparing for this, but I've, I, yeah, I really, I think the, the main theme material uh, and the throne room, like are, are super compatible. Like they need to, they're, they're more like fourth movement, kind of like triumphant. We've won we blow up the battleship kind of material. Yeah. This is what I wanted to suggest like from the beginning. Yeah. yeah um, so if we had the last movement be main title and uh, so a theme is main title and B is the um, throne room. Then we have the development of those themes. You could write like a 20 minute movement to be honest, because those themes are so forgiving. If we get then, and then the coda is the coda makes perfect sense to be the, um, uh, the, the, you know, end credits, the, so like two minutes of that, sort of like a grand finale. I like that idea. I don't know if, uh, Stephen and Robert uh, agree with that because that we're just, I think it's also because we're just so, we just want Star Wars to begin with that theme. Well, I'm also curious though about so where um, did we just drop? Le like Leia's not gonna not gonna make it. This is gonna be a symphony of the patriarchy or something. No, no. <laughs> I'm, I, we'd have to rethink the first movement then, which would probably be the Force theme and Leia's theme together. Yeah, those those two together, totally. Totally. So, so like a, a, yeah. a plaintive first movement. I'm trying to think of an example. Uh, yeah, you know, like a Beethoven sixth, a nice lyrical opening to the symphony. Yeah. What's like, another good example? Brahms four. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, all right. So, are we gonna are we gonna consider this now for the fourth movement to have the main title? It is my under vote is yes. Yeah. It's weird, it's weird to hear that at the, at the end of a symphony that big are we talking about that like intro main theme or yeah as the yeah. fourth movement i just don't see another place to put it like the so the, that would mean the, like the, the first move the first movement would be a theme force theme and then b theme would be leia's theme or reverse I think Force theme and then Leia's theme. Yeah. She's like that sweet candy in the middle. Yeah, that would be the lyrical theme, even though the Force theme is incredibly lyrical. What I can do now is go through mo movement by movement with what we have so far. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say what we have, and we can say, let's like, preliminarily agree on this and then I can go through just sort of the, the cues from the movie. Obviously keys aren't going to match up and Tempe aren't going to necessarily match up, but we can uh, either say yay or nay to what, what I have written down so far. So 
first movement A theme is the force theme. I'm thinking probably the the sort of the binary sunset uh, version of it with the horns slowly coming out of like nothing. And then the B theme is Leia's theme. Now I, I you probably have to figure out a way to build up energy for the force theme to then be able to die down into Leia's theme. That's my only worry with combining these two themes is that there's there is a a like a somewhat similar mood to them. So you'd have to get the force theme like going or you use the development section to introduce the binary sunset sort of moody version of the force theme well it's like those themes are brother and sister you know okay so the first so let's that would be the first movement then the second movement is separate there's no attacker there's a space between the movements a pause would be a section uh, let me pull up the slide a section would be the Dune C, B section would be all three Java themes. Then the Dune C returns. Then we get the version of the the Tie Fighter. Yeah, the Tie Fighter theme with the we do an attacka between the Dune C and the Tie Fighter theme with that intro. And then we have we probably like shoehorn the Death Star theme in between there is sort of like a punctuation that now things are starting tie fighter theme stormtrooper is sort of an underlying element then the rebel motif then for the trio we bring in that force theme and main theme again so the main theme is being foreshadowed here for the force movement are we in agreement with that or not yes okay um then we have the we go back to the sort of scherzo de capo shorter. Now here's the other thing that we should maybe think, do we want an attacker here with the imperial motif going into the main title or we just forget the imperial motif altogether? I, I'd say forget it. It would be very confusing to sort of introduce a whole new... Uh, or the imperial motif motive. goes in the first... Or, uh, or the imperial motif goes into the first movement as a, as a, as a C theme. That could work getting us into the development even. Yeah. I'm going to put that there for now. As cuz you could you could actually use that as as a a something that can intersperse the force theme and and Leia's theme. I'll I'll, I'll put that there for now. So the second and third movement are attackers, which I think is interesting. So the second and third movement go together, so we have like a three movement a pseudo three movement symphony, even though it's four movements. And then the fourth movement just starts with the main title and then the throne room. And then the coda is the end credits. It makes sense to me. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm, 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 so the last question before I go through each, um, uh, motif is, if we go back to the first movement here and we start with the force theme, do we put in the imperial motif between Leia's theme or after Leia's theme? So between the I'd force theme after. and Leia's theme. After, so then. Because especially if you're thinking, a, it's like a, a, it'll give you an, the ability to retransition back to the beginning for like a, a repeat of the exposition. Okay. All right. Sounds good to me. Okay, so let's go through movement by movement here. So, the first movement would start with the force theme. go to the B theme, which would be Leia's theme.
this would then sort of melt away into a imperial motif that's just sort of connective tissue into the development. And then in the development, we can have obviously the sort of more energetic versions of the theme. So let's say the force theme here, that which, which is mixed with the DSC array. And then the, the high energy version of Leia's theme. So those would be in the development and then as we come to the end of the first movement. That would probably be the code of the first movement, right? Yeah, it needs to end mm -hmm. big, I think. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I think that's pretty bitch in first movement, to be honest. With and all the potential, the, that I just, like, yeah. the the other benefit of like you know not starting with the main titles music in the first movement is like you're not you're not blowing your wad at the beginning of the symphony, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so let's move on to the second movement now. So the second movement starts with the Dune C. Now into the B section. Jawa themes. Okay, and then back to the A section.
Now this would leave us, uh, lead us Attacko into the Scherzo movement. TIE Fighter attack. This one. And then interspersed maybe with some of the Stormtrooper motif stuff. And then this would go into the trio section, which is then horse theme number five is what we decided. So... And then the next trio theme. You might want to start with this one and, and, and then go into the forest theme. Excellent. Note. And this would then take us back to Tag Vital. For the rebel motif. And this will now bring us to the fourth movement where our main theme is now the triumphant beginning. Then to the B theme, clone, room. And then all of, obviously, all of the motifs, uh, all of the sort of uh, motivic development you can do with those themes, so any sort of version of the main theme. In the development section. That'd be an example of something that would happen in the development section. And then after we get through the recapitulation, then we have the coda, which is the end credits. So 
sort of a retro a retrospect of all the motifs that have been in the work. I think that's that's uh, works out perfectly. Do you guys agree? Do you think we did it? Yeah, I'm actually very pleasantly. I was a little skeptical, but I'm very pleasantly surprised just hearing it all kind of laid out back yeah. to back like that. That it's like, oh, this actually works like remarkably well. Steven? yeah, super cool. And Zach, I I don't I don't know if I have any any major major objections. To be honest, like I, I feel like, um, you know, obviously how it would lay out if you if someone were to do this uh, legit and do the whole thing. I mean, you know, the treatment of the, those development sections and whatnot, um, you know, uh, so much of it rests on that. But aside and, and then, you know, how, how you're going to end with your big, you know, B flat, B flat major chord at the end you know, with timpanies doing one five or whatever, you know, yeah. uh, but like, I, I think that, um, it would be, uh, I think there would be many instances where the thing could kind of write itself as we've kind of illustrated, just taking clips from the movie score and arranging them in a way that yes, this, this would lay out in a way that if somebody knew what they were doing with an orchestra and harmonically and orchestrationally that they, they could they could totally make this work yeah yeah and you'd also have to consider things like if the main title is going to stay in b flat because that's just kind of what we want then the then the symphony is probably in like b flat so then maybe the force theme you'd have to you know it, its introduction would have to be in b you know transposed into b flat etc but yeah the like for example like my my personal opinion is that that the the you know, controversy here. We haven't had much of that yet, but the the force theme in the binary sen sunset for that whole, it's actually, in my opinion, too high. It's a it's a key. It's a it's it's a step or maybe a minor third, maybe even a major third too high. Um, but uh, you know, these are all things that you could you could totally rearrange some of the tessiatura uh, things to make them. Uh, work in symphonic form, just like I think you know, opening on opening the whole symphony on high C's like that. I mean, that's that's ballsy as hell, you know, for for a composer to trust that trumpet sections everywhere will be able to really nail that to where it'll sound compelling. And so I think that um, even if it's uh, even if it's a high B flat on a on a B flat trumpet or whatever, you know, whatever instruments the trumpet sections using. So it'd be concert A flat. You're still going to get a, a hell of a lot of power. Like the high note in Mahler five, the opening trumpet solo is a high concert A flat. And that's powerful as all hell. So you can still get all of those things without some of the instruments being in the stratosphere of their range. Anyway, that's my, that's my thought on keys. And, and, and Zach, any, any final thoughts from the, the crew before we wind things up? I actually thought this was a lot of fun, to be quite honest. Um, but I'll, I'll let I'll let Zach speak before I say some final things. No, completely agree. Yeah, it was a blast. Um, yeah, it would be interesting to hear like more like a solo violin or solo cello. Um, like uh, if there's any other like arrangements of these themes that feature more like solo instruments. Um, but yeah, I think it really works surprisingly well. So it was a fun project. I agree, and 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 uh, if people like this video, we could we could go through <laughs> we could go through every Star Wars film except for maybe the Disney ones. Uh, maybe maybe we could include the Force Awakens because I think at least that movie has a, a coherent plot, um, and Williams was able to follow that um, in his score. I think things sort of deteriorate. No fault of Williams, to be honest, uh, in the later movies. Um, yeah, I mean, the later movies, I, I couldn't do the later movies, like, constitutionally within my being. I just, now that it's been Disney-fied, like, it's, I'd, I'd be banging my head against the wall. But, like, Empire Strikes Back? Hell yeah, we get to do the Imperial March and all that, and Asteroid Field stuff. That's awesome. And, and, and the Cloud City theme and Yoda's theme, there's a lot yeah. there, too. Oh, and the and the the love theme is so good from Empire Strikes Back. Of Han and uh, Leia, is that it? Han and Leia, yeah. 
we could do that too. But but people have to like this stream. If, if nobody watches this, then <laughs> then screw it. <laughs> You're, it isn't worth it. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, guys. I really had I really had a fun time. I think this 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 was interesting. And I, what I want to do it is the point of this video is also to show people like how to structure a piece and how to approach a a like fully composing a piece with themes we all know really well and and star wars is sort of like a movie that's ingrained i think in every like like at least boy's mind from the age of like you know five or six when they first watch it at least for our generation i don't i don't know what zoomers are consuming but um it's just sort of like ingrained the scenes the themes everything sort of especially if you're a composer that it kind of makes it an interesting exercise to consider um because i love to talk about form a lot but it's just sort of an interesting exercise to see how you could organize it into a a, a work divorced from the film itself yeah so thanks guys uh, if anybody wants to add anything um uh, go ahead but otherwise i think we'll this is where the uh discussion will end thanks thank you thanks thank you very much Hopefully till next time, guys. All right. Bye-bye.